lots of common traits to be found among championship winning racing drivers. But there's one trait they share with fans like you and me. The dream of measuring their skills in a state of the art racing car for the very first time. And we'll all be witnesses as two great champions, NASCAR's Tony Stewart and Formula One's Lewis Hamilton live that dream on a world renowned racing circuit. Welcome to Seat Swap, Hamilton versus Stewart from Watkins Glen, New York. Hello everybody, I'm Bob Varsha. Welcome to a very special event here on Speed. And as you can see, the weather conditions are going to make this an even bigger challenge for two of the best in the business. With me to help bring you all the action, a couple of fellas who know the taste of champagne from Victory Lane in both NASCAR and Formula One from the mechanical side. Larry McReynolds from NASCAR on Speed and Fox and Steve Matchup, our regular Formula One colleague here on Speed. Larry, the question I've gotten from fans knowing we were going to be doing this today is always the same. Who has the bigger challenge, Stewart or Hamilton? Well, we have a little bit of experience doing something like this. So the three of us back in 2003 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Grand Prix Circuit, Juan Pablo Montoya and Jeff Gordon swapped rides. And I think we'll see more of the same today because if you go back to that right there, Jeff Gordon pretty much underdrove the Formula One car and Juan Pablo Montoya did a classic job of overdriving with a lot less downforce, the Sprint Cup Series car. I think we may see something very similar to that today, Bob. How about you, Steve? Oh, for me, this is just a fantastic treat. It's such a rare pleasure to be able to work with Larry Mack. I don't know we're going to have a lot of fun. But when we talk about Cup Car, NASCAR, and Formula One, yeah, they are very different. The technology is different. The racing is different. The series is different. But for me, they are two branches of the same family. It is motorsport. We're here to have fun, and that's exactly what we're going to do. That's right. And you know it's a dream come true for each of these great drivers to drive the other man's racing car. They are among the best at what they do, and they've done things that even veteran fans may not be aware of. Here are Larry Mack and Steve to give us the details on Stewart and Hamilton. When race fans hear the name Tony Stewart, it's often in reference to his pedigree driving stock cars. It's easy to forget that his accomplishments in the open wheel world are equally as impressive. In 1978, at the age of seven, Stewart competed in his first go-kart race. Fast forward 10 years, and at age 17, he was crowned the World Karting Association champion. Stewart's open-wheel career progressed over the next seven years, and in 1995, he became the first driver to win championships in all three of USAC's major divisions in the same season. While Stewart was making a name for himself in the USAC ranks, an eight-year-old Lewis Hamilton was just beginning his racing career across the pond. Much like Stewart, Hamilton cut his teeth behind the wheels of go-cars, where he claimed multiple British and European championships. In 1996, Stewart continued his meteoric rise in open-wheel racing while driving in the IndyCar series. That same year, he made his debut in stock cars, running nine races in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. The following year, Stewart captured the 1997 IRL Championship before deciding to make the transition to NASCAR full-time in 1999. In 2000, Lewis Hamilton reached the pinnacle of kart racing when he was ranked number one in the world. It was now time to move to single-seaters, and in only his second full season of racing cars, he claimed the British Formula Renault Series title. 2002 began on a sour note for Stewart when he finished dead last in NASCAR's premier event, the Daytona 500. But a consistent season featuring three wins, including one here at the Glen and 15 top five finishes, led Tony to the top of the NASCAR mountain. The Rushville Rocket from Indiana is the 2002 Winston Cup champion. The well-respected F3 Euro Series was Hamilton's stage in 2005, where he ran away with the title, winning 15 of the 20 races. 2005 was also a championship year for Stewart, taking his second Sprint Cup title. The following year, Hamilton graduated to the GP2 Championship, where he was able to showcase his talent in front of the Formula One teams by taking the crown in his rookie year. Ten years after being signed by McLaren to a development contract, Lewis was ready to race in F1. The rookie defied convention by netting four wins while consistently outpacing his more experienced teammate. In the process, he narrowly missed becoming world champion in his rookie season. While Hamilton was beginning 2008 as a championship favorite, Stewart was planning a new challenge, team ownership. 
I promise you, it'll work. And made good on his promise the following May, getting his first win as an owner in the all-star race at Charlotte. 2008 proved to be a banner year for Hamilton when he joined the Formula One list of champions in arguably the most dramatic finale ever. Hamilton in fifth. He will come from behind to claim the world title. Since then, both drivers continue to rack up impressive numbers. Stewart has amassed 39 career NASCAR victories, placing him in a tie for 17th most all time. While Hamilton has reached the F1 podium in half of his career starts. Two drivers, both at the peak of their respective sports. Two entirely different career paths, and yet both simply want to drive and drive fast. And one other thing you should know about both men, they are huge fans of one another and each man's respective sport. So you can imagine this is a big treat. Now you'd think the biggest treat of all for those of us who are taking part this weekend would be to be right down there amongst the racing superstars at Watkins Glen International, but under these conditions, I'm not so sure that's true. Nevertheless, let's meet the fourth member of our team, a familiar face here on speed, Ralph Shaheen. Hey. Hey, Bob, this is arguably one of the nastiest days I've seen at a racetrack in a long time. It is in the very low 50s. The wind is howling. The rain is coming down. We've got a big crowd of fans here watching everything today. But look what else we've got right here. We've got Lewis Hamilton's McLaren MP24-3. And right next door to it, Tony Stewart's NASCAR race car ready to go. The crews have just pushed the cars out. They're getting everything set. And I think one of the things that's kind of interesting is look at all the crew guys over here checking out each other's stuff. Here's all of Tony's guys, Darian Grubb and his crew looking at the McLaren. And then over here, you got some of the McLaren gang taking a look at the stock car as well. It's wet, it's cold, but we're going to have some fun up here today at the Glen. That's right, Ralph. Nobody said it would be easy. And that's another memory from 2003. Juan Pablo Montoya versus Jeff Gordon. The crewmen wanted to pour over each other's cars. The fun's just beginning, trust me, at Watkins Glen International, and we'll be right back to seat swap. Beginning in 1948, sports car races through the town and surrounding area of Watkins Glen, New York, captured the flavor of European road racing. The races were tremendously successful, but the dangers of racing on crowded public roads brought tragedy. After an eight-year-old spectator was killed in 1952, the racing was moved out of town to a closed course until 1955. The following year, the event organizers constructed a 2.3-mile circuit, and Watkins Glen International was born. Our thanks to Sam Posey for that quick thumbnail of Watkins Glen International. So NASCAR and Formula One, are the series poles apart? Well, not necessarily. Steve and Larry Mack profile the series where our two stars of the show today make their living. Stereotypes are a convenient way to pare down complex differences into something easier to digest. Some might say that NASCAR fans and drivers are typically Southern Americans. And that they like their racing simple and their turns left. And others might say that Formula One fans are stereotypically European. Their drivers elitist and prefer their racing to be as technically complex as their circuits. Like most stereotypes, these are mere gut reactions based on anecdotal evidence. The international differences aren't as stark upon closer examination. NASCAR is not confined within America's borders. Their races are broadcast in over 100 countries and over 20 different languages. And Formula One's fan base isn't strictly European. It's broadcast in over 200 countries. And when F1 raced in the United States, it's attracted well over 100,000 fans annually. NASCAR's driver lineup has open wheel and international drivers. Plus, there have been more Formula One drivers from the United States than every other country besides the UK. Despite their overlap, these are still two very different motorsports. NASCAR rules the roost in sheer size, bigger fields, a bigger season, and bigger cars too. But in many ways, Formula One has a larger stage, traveling to five different continents throughout the season. Once on the track, Formula One cars don't trade positions nearly as often as their NASCAR cousins. They set a record this year with 82 total on-track passes. At Talladega, there were 88 lead changes alone. 
Technically, the two sports are also on opposite sides of the spectrum. Formula One has used computers for decades, providing teams with terabytes of live information every moment their cars are on track. NASCAR teams are not allowed to use data acquisition. Drivers and crew chiefs still rely mainly on experience and instinct. To gloss over these real differences between the sports would not be fair to either elite series and would miss what makes them both uniquely great. And one thing both series share is committed race fans. A big shout out to all the folks who have come to Watkins Glen International for a seat swap to watch Tony Stewart and Lewis Hamilton trade race cars on an absolutely miserable day. Well, we've heard about the series. We've heard about the drivers. Now let's hear from them. Lewis Hamilton and Tony Stewart standing by with Ralph Shaheen. Well, the cars have made their way out to the track and now so have our drivers. We have Lewis Hamilton with us and Tony Stewart. And Tony, let's begin with you. Uh, I, I haven't seen you giggle this much in, in quite a while. You look like you're a kid in a candy store today. Yeah, this is an early Christmas present for sure. It's uh, you know an opportunity of a lifetime and thanks to Mobile One, we uh, are gonna get to uh, do something I've only dreamed about. And before that, you gotta go take the cup car out for Lewis and you got rain tires on this thing, something you don't do a lot as well. How's that gonna feel, do you think? I don't know, I think it's gonna be just as odd trying to learn the cup car in the rain as it is uh, the F1 car in the rain. So uh, the good news is we're gonna get a chance to, to run our own cars first. And uh, you know, I've spent some time with Lewis, so I'm very comfortable knowing that whatever information he tells me is gonna be spot on. Lewis, what are your thoughts on the cup car? What has Tony told you already? Uh, well, we've had a little, a, bit, a brief discussion about it, but I think uh, we were just, we we're just saying that probably when we get out there, we have a better feeling for what our cars need and and, uh, and give us each other a little bit more information. But I'm seriously so excited to get out on this thing. I mean, it's so much different to what sits over here. You know, we we have a much much lighter car. Just it's just just different kind of science, but it's it's you know it's against the same kind of uh, we're going still going for the same goal, it's to win, which is to to win. All right, Lewis, great to have you here at Watkins Glen. Guys, these guys are going to get strapped in their cars, and we're going to get this show on down the road. All right, thanks very much, guys. The cars will be warmed up, and as you, had Ralph, as you heard Ralph explain, Tony will take some laps in the stock car, Lewis in his McLaren, and then they will swap. Stay with us. The boys will mount up shortly. The first professional race at Watkins Glen took place in 1957 when NASCAR ventured up north. Buck Baker edged Fireball Roberts for the win in the 101-mile Grand National event. NASCAR would make two more trips to the Glen in 1964 and 65 before returning permanently in 1986. That race was won by Tim Richmond, who held off Darrell Waltrip in an epic duel. Since then, Tony Stewart has been a ringer, securing five victories at the Glen. Today we're using the full international circuit for a seat swap. And right now, Tony Stewart and Lewis Hamilton are in the race cars they're familiar with. Getting in a photo op at the end of this lap, Tony will turn off and Lewis will turn it up. That gives us time to tell you this Friday night, it'll be madness in the Motor City on trackside. Tune in, Martin Truex Jr., Ryan Newman, and Hall of Famer Bud Moore will stop by the wildest party in racing. Don't miss NASCAR trackside from Michigan, Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, only on speed. And Bob, that race that in 1964 when NASCAR was here at Watkins Glen, the winner was Billy Wade. The owner of that car was Bud Moore. And I sure hope they asked Bud Moore about what it was like bringing a stock car to Watkins Glen. Like? Is it slippery? It's actually quite a lot of grip. That's good to hear. Good to hear. Good to hear indeed that there's good grip out there, at least for the Formula One car. Let's go quickly to Ralph Shaheen. You know, Bob, I spoke with Tony just a few minutes ago before they put the window net up, and, and he said, you know, to learn the track here, I actually stayed up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m., speed aired a race from here, one of the Challenge Series events, and he watched the entire broadcast because he's never run the boot section of Watkins Glen before, and he said he learned as much as he could from the broadcast, got a bunch of laps in on the simulator. He did, however, not factor in the rain. <laughs> of course not. I believe that was the Grand Am Continental Tire Series You're on speed. Steve, I love the look of comparing the height of the two cars. It almost looks like a little matchbox car over there besides that Sprint Cup Series car. 
Larry, you're absolutely right. They are so different, aren't they? And look at this shot. I mean, that just highlights it right there. The, the height different, the weight difference. And yet, in terms of horsepower, Larry, these two machines producing pretty much about the same figure. Yeah, a little over 800 horsepower.